déjà ton frère alors. Hein. D'accord. On commence hein. alors. Il... Ok. <rire> tu veux de nous euh... Tu vas de nous Ah oui, je viens. Bon, bah, apparemment, ça n'a pas été ouvert. Donc, hein. Vas-y. Oups. Bon, bah, c'est parfait, on va commencer. We'll start again with our next presentation, the last one about GStreamer, uh, this time on WP WebKit. Uh, please welcome Philippe Normand. Thank you for coming. Um, so it would be a really short lightning talk about uh, integrating WebKit and GStreamer, but in a, in a new way. Um, so who am I? I I'm involved in, in GStreamer and WebKit um, since quite a few years already. I contribute patches to both projects, and I work for a worker-owned company co called Igalia. And we are around 80 people now uh, working together. So WP, the basics, I'm not going to go into the details, um, but wh what I can say is it's, it's a web engine based, in, based on WebKit, and it, it's really, uh, it's been designed for embedded use cases, to be used in um, embedded devices. Uh, it has a six months release cycle like WebKit GTK, so it's, it's quite a, a good advantage because it, it gets regular security updates from the upstream WebKit project. And there's no dependency on any UI toolkit. Uh, it's really a bare bone uh, project, basically, to be used in embedded. So if there's no UI toolkit, how do we do the rendering? We have um, some kind of plugin system. We call it view backends. And um, we have uh, those backends for various graphics drivers. Uh, for Wayland, uh, there's a, an experiment for Android as well, and specific uh, backends for specific uh, graphics drivers. For instance, we, we had one backend for a uh, Qualcomm uh, driver. So I'm going to talk about the one specific backend called FDO. Uh, why, why is it called FDO? Because it relies on a lot of uh, libraries from the FreeDuster project. Um, it depends on the Wayland EGL API, and it, it provides uh, cross-process uh, buffer sharing support. And it has API for EGL images, uh, Wayland resources, and also Linux DMA buff um, support. Right now it's internal only, but we plan to expose it at the API level as well. And it's used in combination with Mesa. And it works on, on desktop and embedded. Um, the work I did, I mainly developed on desktop and I got validated on embedded uh, after. So if you were in the previous talks, I guess you know already about this streamer, or, so I'm not going to go really quick on that one. Um, it's a, GStreamer is a multimedia platform, uh, <laughs> multimedia framework, uh, to, uh, to de develop appli multimedia applications. Uh, here you can see uh, I stole that image from the documentation, uh, an example of a pipeline uh, representing a, a, a video player, as Ishan did in this talk as well. <laughs> So this talk is about uh, HTML overlay and what are the use cases for that. There's quite a few use cases, but I'm, not, I'm just going to talk about um, the, the one uh, in this talk, which is, uh, for instance, when you broadcast uh, a live stream, like you do for the first day maybe, you have notifications or, or background uh, overlays. Um, so you, you could do that in HTML, for instance. Um, and you can also display banners, um, animations with using CSS. There's, there's a lot of things you can do with that. Um, so the project I, I developed is basically GST WP, it's a plugin providing a source element. Um, so the dependency is uh, that you need to have a GL support on, on in a pipeline and uh, the FDO backend is used internally by the source element, and a web view is created by the source element, and it's, it basically it will, it will load the page that you configured as, as the source, as, as the location property of the source element. And you, you will get um, internally EGL images from the view backend, and those EGL images will be wrapped in GST EGL images. So there's no, no copy there, no and it's, it's quite nice because it happens everything in the GPU, so uh, it's, it's, it's 
performs quite well. <coughs> and then those GST GL images are pushed downstream to, towards the sink, the video sink, or uh, other elements. So that's the most basic element uh, example I have. It's basically a, a web browser using a GStreamer pipeline. And uh, the video frames generated by the source element are pushed to the video sync. And the input events coming from the video sync, like when you touch, uh, when you scroll or use the mouse, those input events are forwarded upstream to the source element and it then can be forwarded back to WebKit so that you can scroll the page and it will have an effect on the video frames. So, yeah, that's, there's a non limitation about that because right now the source element push only video frames, so there's no audio support yet. I'm going to talk about that later. And a, a, sec a more complex example involves uh, video mixing. So there, on, on, the, on the left, you have the source elements. You have two sources, a uh, media source that can use like any kind of media you want to provide to the pipeline, <coughs> and the WP source. And then those, um, the media source gets decoded and, and goes to, uh, to a video mixer, GL video mixer. So everything there happens in the GPU. Um, there's no, no download uh, to the central memory. And then the, the video frames are composed together in the GL video mixer and output it to the video sync. So I have a demo there, but I don't know if I have time. Yeah, if you want to see the, the demo, you can scan that code, and it's available on YouTube. So basically what you see in that demo is uh, first uh, a pipeline showing a web page side by side with a uh, normal video. It's the Sintel video, I think. So they are composed together, but shown uh, side by side. And the second one is um, uh, notifications um, that are provided by an HTML page using a transparent ba ba background and you can see the, the, the notifications being overlaid on top of the video. So there are advantages and disadvantages to using GCWP compared to other approaches that could be based in on Chromium, for instance. Uh, the advantages are that the WP is really designed for application embedding and used in, um, in embedded devices. And it does everything in the GPU. Uh, you don't need to. So performance there is, is really, really good if you have good graphics drivers, of, of course. And it's WP is known to work on really small devices uh, down to 256 me megabyte, megabyte of, of RAM. But there are some disadvantages. Like I said before, the, the audio buffers are not rendered yet. So I plan to work on that at some point, maybe. And there's no, uh, there's limited input event support because in GStreamer the input events only was designed for mainly for DVD at the beginning, so it would need to that API would need to be uh, uh, d redesigned a bit, I think. And then there's the dependency on Wayland and GL because of the FDO backend. So right now this works on only on Linux for now. So what I've been working on after streaming that source element is uh, transparent background support for the web view. It's not much yet, it's in Bugzilla, um, but I've, I've used, used it for, for producing those demo that you could see on YouTube. Um, also, I plan to work on audio support. It would be three steps, as you can see. <coughs> Maybe also in GStreamer itself, try to improve the input events API. And uh, there's an idea about uh, communicating between the, the pipeline itself and the WP source element so that when you can have uh, communication there at, for specific applications, maybe some for video players that could be, uh, uh, do some input events, over input events something. And per perhaps also support more platforms. So we, this is upstream in GC plugins bad. It's not bad. It's the, it's the repository where new plugins go usually in GStreamer. Um, you can see another demo there if you want. Um, and yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. We have time for one question. So we have time for one question.